Well, hell, everybody, I'm getting into another project that's probably 15 or 16 years past due now, and that is putting in a privacy fence where you see this chain link. It's just kind of mishmash put together. It's very strange. Just random posts, just wire. Just a post, wooden post, this, that, and the other. We rescued a husky mix, and she has no problem leaping right over this guy. So we've had to go get her twice so far. So we're going to tear all this out and build a privacy fence. I'll show you the rest of it and how bad a shape it really is. All right, here's another section. You can kind of see how this was just scabbed in with bits of pipe and flashing buried in the ground. Whoever built this must have had a digger at one point. Coming back by my shed here, this back corner, we switched to chain link, barbed wire, and it just kind of goes around and ties on to more wire back here. This is actually the corner of my property. And this fence isn't exactly straight. I'm actually going to gain a little bit down through here. But this is the exact corner. And then moving into this menagerie of patchwork. You can see this post in the last storm has let go. I'd set a couple in here years ago just to keep it propped up before I got to it. And now it's time. Just continuing on here. This rose bush. That was a lot of work. It grew all the way up into this arbor. It was massive. This arbor is something I built that my wife and I actually got married under. It's a little worse for wear now. Legs are kind of rotten off, but she wants to keep it, so we'll try to patch that up later. There's a gate right here. I'm actually moving the gate. I'm going to put the gate out here this time. But like I said, this thing needed to be replaced when we bought this property all these years back. And, like I said, now it's time. This is a post I just stuck in a couple years ago. And then back in this corner. The first post will probably sit, be set right about here. This chain link is on the property line, but a house was built next to me, and they built the fence just in. So I'll set my post out here to maintain that corner post for her and then I'll cantilever across and tie in right here all three spots and then I'll run up to that so I'm actually going to gain here oh uh, I don't know 12 14 inches this whole area down here was just rose not rose bush I'm sorry uh honeysuckle that's what all this is right here I've cut it all out a lot of work just to get this far once I start taking this out I should be able to pull this out with my winch after I get that out I'll start in the alley and work down this way remove these poles or cut them off below grade if I can get to them another huge couple of rose bushes right here trying to preserve these I'm not putting anything here I just need to get this out and then once I take this out they built this fence really close to my shop. You see how close that is now. Nothing I can do about it. It's on. It's actually just on their property line. My shop's in here a little crooked. I'll set a post here at the back corner. And again, I'll tie in right there and close this area in so the dogs can't just walk out that way. All right, I poked my head through a hole in the fence. This is the alley. Uh, I'm not sure how wide it is, maybe 25, 30 feet. Uh, but you see all that overgrowth down there? Everything you see that's cleared out is what my wife and I had recently done. I try to stay ahead of this, but it gets away from me. I get busy doing over things, other things. And that's a new utility pole. They had to restring my line. And then there's a new house being built right back there. So that was a lot of work to get this far as well. This is an empty lot behind me, uh, so I can't come down the alley from either direction. Uh, they've been putting in sewer lines and electric lines, so they've got it closed off that direction. The other direction is just massively overgrown, but there's an old drive right through here. So I come up by this house, 
and come over this way and that's how I'm going to be getting my materials in here as well as hauling all this stuff out and this wisteria right here man that was a lot of work too this whole fence the whole thing was just covered with it uh, the stuff grows like weeds I believe I'm going to start with removing this wooden section in the back first or everything wood that's here that's going to get disposed of uh, we make burn piles on my dad's property and burn things like this up uh, which is beneficial to me so once I get this torn out I'll be able to get my truck in the backyard via the alley so I can get my materials right back where I'm working make my stacks and continue on so here we go all right guys here's a progress report on where we're at got most of everything torn out now got to do a little bit of repairing in here a few more roots to kind of dig out use my winch for the majority of taking things out most of the fence posts though I rocked and just pulled out by hand here is everything that's wooden including tree trimming and stuff like that that's going to get discarded I've got to get some dirt work done I need some grading done problem I'm having or we've had for eons is the yard slopes off and then back in this alley it's like a berm so it just stands and my backyard floods with water so hopefully we can drag some of this around and make it to where it will drain properly I've got to take this corner post out right here I'll use my winch get it out of there and then I've got a couple of them three posts up there that I need to drag out this is just kind of a rough idea on where the fence is going to be I did that so I could figure out how much I needed to take off that tree right there get the fence in behind it that should be good and as far as all the steel business This is everything that was taken out from all the chain link and the hodgepodge mess of stuff. This will go to the curb for the scrappers. Alright guys, I threw all that old chain link fencing, concrete that was attached to the posts, all the other mishmash of stuff, steel, out on the curb and within four hours it was gone. I heard the guy out there for probably a good hour banging things in his truck in the dark. He canvassed the yard, took 100% of everything, concrete and all. You can't beat that deal. Alright guys, we made some progress, but I'm having to shift gears. I called a couple people to do some dirt work for me grading out here. Nobody returned my calls. That house that's being built back over here. There was a man on a tractor, so I went and asked him if he was for hire, and he said no, he was the builder. He said, what do you need? I told him. He came over and did some work for me. I tried to pay him, and he said no, pay it forward. And I said, well, all right, so I'll do that. I'm going out of town in, I don't know, under 10 days. So I was doing some excavating. He drug some dirt out in here, but it had so much gravel and stuff, I had to tear it all up, sift it out. But... I was marking out my lines when they built this house next to me this is the corner marker right there there's one way up in the front my objective was to sneak by my shop string line it down crossing these and then three four five off this corner to shoot back on my property I'm kissing the edge of my trim on the shop so I couldn't get a good measurement through here so what I ended up doing was, you can see all this overgrowth and a telephone pole, all that business, AT&T box. There's a marker down there as well. I came out from that marker 36 inches into the alley and I have a piece of rebar driven in there. I don't know if you can see it. And then from this marker right here, I came out 36 inches from this piece of rebar. So I tied my string off on that one, coming past this one, went all the way down here, and 
had to extend my batter board because of that 36. Tightened up my line, moved away, and just came in and kissed that and tied it off right here on this batter board. Then I measured over 36 inches and established my corner after lining up over the pin with that piece of mason string. And then going from the front marker in the corner of that house over 50 feet and up on this one, I 3 4 5 to this one after measuring 50 feet down this string, 50 feet across the front, checked it 3 4 5, it's dead on the money, so I've got a right angle here. So now I've got a batter board here, one way up in that corner. I think I'm going to have to take one more limb off that tree. Things are just not lining out the way they were when I went from that original corner post. That one up there in the front I think was a little too far this direction. Alright guys, well I've been playing with my string layouts. Just kind of let you know what I'm doing. This is the back side of the stringer that will run and tie there. This is my finished fence line right here. So this first post will be set on the back of this line right here. Now this is, I had it in there straight and it was just shifting things and then having the finish side inside the fence line instead of out. It got way too tight behind my shed. So I am putting it in here at a slight angle. As it was, I only had about 14 inches out here. Now I have closer to two feet. You'll never be able to see that unless you get a bird's eye view on this corner. So this post is actually going to sit right here and then once I get the corner post set these lines will be moved and tied to the post themselves so I'll set them all from the back side to ensure a good straight line. Up in this corner nothing much to note but there's some odd stuff going on up here. Again, this is where this post is going to sit, right there. I've got this well in the way. I've been entertaining tearing it out, but I don't have time. So I've got just enough room for my stringer and the picket to squeeze in here, but I can't nail it. And I'm not going to screw it or anything to the backside. What I'm going to end up doing is temporarily putting on the stringers. I'll set some random pickets across here to keep things in line. I'll leave one off. I'll nail all the way past here, release the stringers, slide it out, nail it, slide it in, and attach it back. Not ideal, but that's what I have to do. This is the way I've elected to do this corner. I'm just going to come to the edge of my trim right here and run straight down. There was a concrete plug in here with a post, so I don't think I'll run into my fitting. But I've got this gap that I'm left with. So on this side, the stringers will tie in and end up just at the edge of this trim. When I put the picket on, I'll just simply scribe around this and butt it up to the house down here. If it's too atrocious looking on the opposite side, I may put some blocking in there and just put a piece of picket. And then the picket itself that's remaining will just lap over this trim and ride up the siding right there. I think that's the way I'm going to attack it. I'm going to definitely start with the corner posts. I'm on crunch time, so I'm going to start punching holes and setting the corners and then laying everything out and moving on. Alright guys, well I've got my corner posts set. I took these holes down to 26 inches, a couple inches of gravel the post, a little bit more gravel, topped it off with concrete. I've actually mounded them up a little bit so any water can slope away from it. I'm not intending on putting soil over these. I'm going to leave them just like they are. It seems they always rot right at the ground level where they make contact with dirt. So it's my idea to do that. I've got all my strings taken off, all the batten boards down. I'm finished 
with that portion it's time now for me to run a string from post to post each direction start laying out and marking for my the rest of my post holes and continue on all right guys well the sun's starting to drop five o'clock p.m drives me crazy it goes down so early but i failed to mention one thing i'm doing because i hadn't finished my grade work and i'm forced to build the fence prematurely i needed to know where my finished grade level was going to be in terms of its height at the post because i'm doming that concrete up a little bit and if i was either too high or too low within range I may be buried or I may be above the surface too high. So what I've done was strung a line all the way around 12 inches high from all the corner posts, marked out where my post is going to sit, measured down off the string, and set it to 12 inches. In this case I needed to shave it some over here I needed to add a little bit up and down all the way around. So now I'm ready to drop my line down, measure again, mark it out with my paint and start punching holes. I'm using a handheld auger. I think I have 18 post holes left to dig. I'm going to try to get them all dug tonight, get the posts set, but that's a pretty tall order. I'll see what I can do. All right guys, well I'm back at it. I punched all my holes with this earthquake auger here. That's the young man's tool. That thing will wear you out. I also got all my posts in the holes and just some support bracing on there. I've got everything plumbed up on this line here. I'm not using rapid set concrete, standard concrete, and I'm mixing it in my mixer in lieu of putting it in the hole. I saved some money by using standard mix. By the time I get through this working, by myself this will be set up enough where I can come back and lay stringers I'm kind of feeling sorry for this apricot tree here I just keep hacking limbs off of it to make room for it but that's what I have to do so that's where I'm at at the moment fill all these holes with concrete and then I'll come around the back level it up a couple of these holes back here were a royal pain I'll go ahead and show you. You can see what I ran into here. I had to break out my rotary hammer to bust all that out. And in hindsight, I missed the hole, so I had to fill it in. Aug a new one here. There was nothing in there. Unbelievable. Had to dig out some of this old plug here I didn't realize was there. And then just more garbage over here and looks like part of an old plug so we're getting there well all right guys I've got all my posts set including these three right here which I've not even discussed yet uh, this is going to be a custom double swing wooden gate I am working on the stringers right now I've got the front ones on I've got to find my scraps for this section. The way I'm doing this is I've got three mason lines in here measured out at the corners and stretched across so I can just bring my 2 by material up to the line and they'll all be nice and straight. Since I'm doing this by myself, that's really the way to go in my opinion. I'm using clamps to just stick out right here so I can just set the 2 by 4 on there bring this up to the line, clamp it, move back, correct it, and then screw them to the 4x4 posts. I'm all the way down here now. You can see where I've left off. This is my gate opening right here. It's just going to be a standard gate. So I've got to finish these stringers. I think I'll build the gate after I get back from being out of town I'll just temporarily affix some pickets across there come back and build it later the other gates more important well alright guys it's getting dark on me I wanted to go ahead and show where I was at got all the stringers installed I've got my back gate right here framed in place basically the way I did that was 
this is still a complete 2x4 to right here and then a new one starts there I framed this in place with all the bracing and whatnot it's easier access to get to everything once I get the pickets on it I'll put the hinges on cutting loose one side at a time get my hole started cut it through with my circular saw tighten up the hinge do the same at the top and then the gate will swing open and close I've added a couple of fillers in here for the latch so it'll have something to bolt to we're moving on all right guys well this is that part up front where that well is you can see i've got some pickets on here that are nailed this is where i'm going to release the stringers and slide it out nail it off and put it back on kind of a pain to have to do it that way but it is what it is once i get past this little section here i'll start cooking and making some ground all right guys well i didn't quite make my goal before i had to go out of town but i made a way around it this is the front section here where I had to nail on some pickets, then disconnect everything, nail the bottom row, and then put it back. No big deal. Did that by myself. Once I got all the stringers up, I made a quick marking gauge to mark all these posts. I cut them off at a slight angle for watershed. Mark, mark, mark. Two cuts with a skill saw. Took care of that. So I, of course, got all these pickets installed. I set the corner ones, ran a string, brought them up to my string line so everything's pretty well straight. I got off a little bit here around these trees. I just didn't quite have a good line of sight. So there's a small hump right there around both of the trees. Nothing I can do about it now. So before I left, I got all these pickets on including the gate. I was going to come back and do that, but I needed my material for other pieces. So I'll show the gate now. Like I said, these top and bottom stringers ran long. I framed the gate in place, mounted a hinge, took it off, ran through there twice with my skill saw, put the hinge back, did the same thing on the bottom. I'm using a post latch. This is for just a standard post, but I wanted a very tight gap here. I've got about a quarter of an inch. So what I did was mortise in the latch right here to give myself a tighter gap and still make room for everything. It's just what I elected to do. Uh, this is the basic framing on the gate right here in a little better detail because the it was quite dark. This actually has been glued and screwed together with a tight bond polyurethane glue, basically Gorilla Glue. Give it a little bit more rigidity. It's nice and solid. And there was a slide lock right here I removed because I don't want anybody back in this alley being able to lock that. And it runs all the way back into the corner. And this is one section I did not complete. I don't know if I ever mentioned this or not, but there's a small gap right here in between my shop and this fence. So I set one post right here. I'll have three stringers inset right here tying on in three spots. And then I'll wrap this with pickets. These are actually going to be screwed on, not nailed. So in the event I ever need to try to get back there and do anything, I can simply remove the pickets and then screw them back on. Alright, well I've completed the section behind my shop. Like I'd mentioned before, these pickets are screwed on, so if I need to get back there for any reason, they're easily removable. Alright, well this is where I'm going to turn my attention right now, is this gate in between the house and the shop. This was my fallback makeshift gate which worked very nicely. Just a piece of plywood. A couple of door hinges and a simple little lever lock right here to keep the dogs in while we were away. Worked out just fine. 
All right, guys, well, here's a shot of the gate. I decided to break this section out into a separate video since it's kind of unique. You can look that up if you like. The only thing I have left to do here is remove the custom latch that I've made, prep it, use some boiled linseed oil and heat to make that weather resistant. I've also made and highlighted in a separate video these custom copper caps that have been installed. Just to show you how the gate works, it'll swing out. I'll give a shot of the outside while I'm out here. Quick shot of the show side. And like I said, it swings both ways. Alright guys, well that pretty much wraps up the fence build project. It's 100% complete, although I still have some dirt work and things like that to take care of for final cleanup. I'll do that. The gate that I built that swings both ways, you can look at the video for that if you're interested in more detail there, as well as a video on how I made the copper caps to go on those three posts. Folks might be wondering why I didn't go with steel posts. Well, the simple answer is cost. It costs about $6.57 for a 4x4 post. And it was around $22 or $23, maybe even $24 for a steel post and a cap square. It was just outside of our budget for the build itself. Speaking of the cost, folks might wonder how much it costs. So I'm going to tell you to the penny. Everything you saw in the video, everything I needed was $1,537.27. That's how much it cost to build it. I don't know exactly how many linear feet I built, but that's what it was. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. Take care and good luck.